very warm welcome to the next episode, new episode of Ink and Insights. Uh, I'm extremely pleased and delighted uh, to welcome a very um, renowned and senior author uh, from Sri Lanka, uh, Daya Disa Nayaka. Um, Daya sir has kindly agreed to be a part of my show. I'm extremely uh, pleased and I would like to welcome him. Um, Daya sir is an award-winning bilingual Sri Lankan novelist, poet and a feature writer. His works uh, spans nine novels in English, six novels in Singhala, a collection of poems and a lot of uh, articles in uh, newspapers, journals and magazines. He is the author of the first e-novel in Asia, The Sadhu Testament, which came on 1998, and the first e-novel in Singhala, Veshan Novu Vidam, which came in 2003. And he is the only Sri Lankan writer to receive the Sri Lankan State Literary Award for the Best English Novel thrice and was also awarded the Saab Literary Award in 2013. Um, Daya sir, it's an immense pleasure to welcome you in my show, sir. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you and Namaskar. And uh, please call me Daya, sir. <laughs> okay. You don't have to call me, sir. Right. So as a writer, so Daya is... Good enough. Yeah, thank you. I'll do that. Can you tell us about your early influences and uh, what inspired you to become a writer? Well, it is something difficult to say. What happened was because I got addicted to reading, I think from a very young stage. From very young days, I got addicted to reading because my father was a very voracious reader. So from him, I adopted, I picked up the habit and he found me enough books even when I was a small kid. So from that I started and then uh, in my school days, I studied in a uh, Catholic school in the deep south in Gaul, uh, in Sri Lanka, Gaul, and uh, St. Aloysius College. And there we had a massive library. We had a student's library. And fortunately, I had access to the Jesuit Fathers Library also, because when they knew that I was a big reader, they opened up the library also. So uh, that is how, and that habit continued. And even now, even now, most of my spare time, I do my reading. So with the reading, it automatically, I mean, I thought I should write something. So I got a few ideas. So at first, I wrote a few short stories. But serious uh, writing of fiction, I started late, I think uh, in the late 90s. So that's how my first novel came out in 1997. And after that, uh, because I got a state award for that, so that gave me an impetus to continue to write. So I have been writing since then. Uh, Daya, your uh, literary career has spanned uh, several decades now. and. Uh, how has your writing evolved over the year, years and what themes or style do you explore in your writing? Uh, there is no specific style or even a theme because now my first novel uh, was a historical novel based in Sri Lanka, 5th century Sri Lanka. Uh, you may have heard of the famous uh, Sigiriya uh, rock citadel of the 5th century. So a lot of books have been written and there are a lot of literature available because uh, Sigiriya uh, probably had the uh, first, uh, I call it the first uh, uh, Facebook because there was a wall there. On the wall, people used to write poetry. So the day it is still preserved. So there are over 1000 poems written over the uh, 5th century to about 12th century. And uh, so I also wanted to write a book on that. So that was my first novel. Then after that, uh, well, my e-novel came next. And that was because even at that time, I believed that the e-book is a future. Because the printed book, there are practical problems. So I have always preferred from then uh, to uh, go for e-books. So my first e-novel, I published uh, called the Sadhu Testament. Uh, it is a contemporary novel. It is like uh, the kind of people we find in South Asia, the gurus uh, who help people, they have the healing powers. So it was a book on that. 
so then i wrote uh, as uh, contemporary novels two or three then i went back to historical novels twice and uh, my last novel i call it a historical novel from the future you know, i talk about a time at least 100000 years from today uh, and and my stories uh, uh, told by a clone a clone who wonders what happened to the human race which had disappeared around the end of the 21st century so the story is that uh, because with the technology available this clone is able, uh, able to go back into the past of the earth and uh, find out from prehistoric times up to 21st century the story of mankind so among most of the novels that you have written um there might be some of the characters that you like most do you remember any any characters uh, the novels that you like most well uh, one of the best characters is my clone and there are a few other characters that i really like and uh, anyway the characters develop and uh, so they are still with me <laughs> so it's part of me now yeah so you have seen they you have seen you know the sri lankan society evolved on different stages you have uh, you know seen it pretty closely um, yeah. how do you see it is evolving right now uh, you know we couple of uh, i think months back we saw in the news how what's happening in sri lanka so uh, can you please set uh, light on the way the sri lankan society is evolving right now well uh, in general i have i have mentioned in number of my novels that uh, mankind stopped evolving from the day he started working on uh, two legs from from the day from the day his uh, four legs were free to uh, be used and uh, he used them mostly as a weapon most to hold weapons rather than tools so that is the tragedy and that's what has happened and with the greed and uh, with uh, all the modern things so we have been declining from that time and it is continuing and that is what i try to say in my clone also and in most of my novels that uh, it's uh, greed and uh, it is the selfish feelings of mankind which we don't find in animals so humanity is gone now today the animals are more humane than human beings so let's say now that's what has happened to our country also because our country is going along with the rest of the world so it's a decline and now people are selfish they don't consider about others and it is not just local it's international that's why we have all these wars that's why we have all these problems and uh, in addition to that uh, because of the political situations and all our uh, country is in a bad economic situation and uh, literary wise also unfortunately in sri lanka the habit of reading has gone down so i feel very disappointed uh, when i visit india so i have i'm sorry i have not been able to visit nepal till now but uh, is it other south asian countries i see three people still read but here people don't read much and the additional issue is now the cost of printing has gone up so badly so and uh, with our devolution of our rupee now uh, for us a uh, small novel a paperback would cost about 2000 sri lankan rupees oh that's too expensive yes uh, so many people can't afford and for some reason people are not uh, making use of the li- available library so reading habit has gone down so that is discouraging us from writing anymore so that is one problem and do you have uh, can you set some insights on your writing process if you have any particular rituals or habits uh, that you have uh, that has helped you in your in your creative process nothing as such only thing is i uh, i uh, use my laptop to write and laptop and now of course even the phone 
and the tablet because whenever I get some idea, I will note it down. Even if I am on the move, even if I am on the road or traveling, if I get an idea, I'll just note it down. And uh, now earlier writers they used to note down things in a notebook or in a piece of paper and they collect it and then they keep on writing. But uh, we have the great advantage over the last uh, few centuries, few decades, that now we can uh, write uh, using technology. So then, uh, yeah, then uh, now some of the novels, I think one novel I started uh, uh, with the end. The, I wrote the last chapter first, and then I went. I then built up a story with that ending. So. And and those are advantages we have now. We, if we, have, we don't have to build a novel from the first incident to the last incident. We can add whatever we want in between. And then even after that, we can uh, cut and paste, cut and chop. So all those advantages are there. So there is no ritual or anything. You just keep on writing. And are you working on any new uh, work, now, new fiction, new novel right now? I am trying to do, actually, uh, after my last novel, The Clone, I went into a historical study of King Ashoka. In fact, I published it in Bhubaneswar three years ago. I titled it, uh, Who Was Ashoka? Because my book was saying that we don't know anything about Ashoka, whether there was even a historical character called Ashoka. All we have are the inscriptions. The rest are legends. So I wrote that. Now I am thinking of going back to his grandfather, Chandragupta, and the Mayura dynasty. So I am working on that because at the moment I am researching. I can't find any evidence that Ashoka ever used the term Mayura for himself. So most of that had been added on later. So I am working on that. Yeah, in fact, uh, I was about to ask you about uh, Ashoka because uh, it seems that there is a very strong connection of uh, that historical character. I mean, you know, there is a reference that he came to Nepal as well. I mean, he is he, from Odisha and then um, was there any linkages with Sri Lanka as well? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the links with Ashoka is mostly with the uh, Buddhist literature, early Buddhist literature because Sri Lanka has... Uh, I mean, some people believe it is the longest historical record in the world. It was the book called Mahavansa. They started writing it around the uh, 3rd or 4th century. And uh, it has continued. And uh, that is where the first mention is that Buddhism was brought to Sri Lanka by the son and daughter of King Ashoka. So that's a very strong connection between... Uh, Sri Lanka and uh, King Ashoka and India and Orissa has a very close link that way because uh, the most sacred Buddhist object in Sri Lanka today is the tooth relic and the legend is that it was brought here from Kalinga. Kalinga Desha is uh, Orissa. So and uh, the re Buddha's uh, hair relic had been enshrined, or the legend says that it was enshrined during the lifetime of Buddha by two traders who also happened to come from Kalinga, this, this Ashoka and Baluka. So the connections are there so much. Yeah, and yeah, on that note, I was also thinking, you know, there's a lot of uh, ties that sort of bring um, us as countries together in South Asia. What's your thought on that? Yeah. I, Yes, because now uh, Nepal and Sri Lanka now immediately when people in Sri Lanka, especially the Buddhists, when they think of Nepal, they think of as the place of birth of Lord Buddha. So that's the immediate uh, connection they have. And then I have many friends in Nepal, mostly writers and poets and all. But uh, we get along with them so well. And uh, if we... I don't know whether you have visited Sri Lanka. If you come here, you will feel quite at home. Though we don't have the cold climate here. We don't have such uh, high uh, mountains. But uh, we have a climate where you will be very comfortable. Our food habits are 
familiar. So it's the same. That's why people visit uh, India a lot, and most of them visit Nepal. But I don't know. Very few people would be visiting Kathmandu because uh, from the Buddhist uh, circuit in India, they go to Nepal, go to uh, Lumbini, and they come back. But now there are students in Kathmandu from Sri Lanka because our universities are congested. So people who could afford it now they are moving out to other countries for their higher studies. And in Kathmandu also there are Sri Lankan students who are doing their first degree and also even postgraduate studies. And there are Buddhist monks from Nepal who are studying at the Buddhist and Pali University. in sri lanka so we have so many connections so um can you also talk about some of the upcoming as you uh, rightly pointed out at that point of time that you are working on the uh, father of king ashoka right now um that's the new book that you are currently working on and what can uh, readers expect from your uh, future literary works well uh, i have an idea of uh, writing a couple of sequels to my earlier novels so that is uh, still a, even my first novel uh, which i mentioned about sigrir so i end it uh, with a question mark whether the story about the king who is supposed to have built the sigrir fortress and strong citadel uh, whether he uh, because the history and legend is that he killed his father and he took over uh, the kingdom you know but there are other versions which don't say that so i have been talking about that so my next novel is my uh, first novel is uh, the because so many people even now visit sigiriya so my story is told by a young buddhist monk who visits from the deep south to sigiriya and what he sees here and hears there yeah. so my next novel which i have started but uh, only just a few chapters uh, this month uh, he uh, when he grows up he goes to india and he studies at nalanda and adis other uh, buddhist uh, institute of education in india and with all that education with his maturity and with what he has seen in india and at the time india of course would have been much vaster than what it is now so uh, then when he comes back uh, how he sees the sigiriya after his visit after his exposure to the rest of south asia so that that's what i want to write and this is going to be in uh, english or in sinhala uh, in english in fact most of my novels i have written in english and six novels i wrote in sinhala that is the same novel i have uh, written in two la- in both languages and it's not translations of one or the other because i write simultaneously the novels that i have written in sinhala i had started along with the english novel and i have written them together simultaneously so uh, in fact uh, the novels that i wrote only in english now i find it difficult to write it in sinhala and you write simultaneously on sinhala and english but on two different different novels right on no on the same novel on the same novel yeah so i have both novels on my computer so if uh, if i get the idea if the thought had been in sinhala i would put it down in sinhala and if it was in english i would put it down in english so uh, that way it is uh, easier than trying to translate from one because uh, english and sinhala are totally different languages so trying to translate from one language to other is not easy so the, that's how i found it there as a senior author uh, what advice would you like to give to aspiring writers especially from either sri lanka or south asia who are looking to establish themselves in the literary world what i would suggest is they should try to read as much as possible not just novels uh, poetry whatever they get told of so that they know about other people and uh, so that we, and when we write also we should write not just with our own country in mind so that someone outside our country also could enjoy our story could understand what we are trying to say 
so that is uh, kind of and also i don't believe much in uh, copyright protection because i believe that whatever we write we should be able to share with anyone anywhere because our earlier writers for the why in the first 1000 uh, years uh, or so they never worried bothered about copyright they never bothered about selling their work they only wrote and they shared it with their uh, friends and with their acquaintances and uh, some of may some of them may have benefited from their kings and rulers but uh, that was not their mind in their mind so we also should be able to share what we have written so that's why uh, two of my novels i released uh, as ebooks even other books uh, now my publishers uh, they they have published the books but still because now books that i have gone out of print now i share freely with anyone who asks for the books i don't mind that and if anyone wants to translate it into some other language i have no restrictions as long as they don't distort the distort what i have written even acknowledgement is not that because now kalidasa would never have restricted any body from copying it or translating it so we should also be like that and also uh, now some of my novels though if they are not readily available in india uh, people have read them and uh, three four novels have been published uh, reprinted in bhuvaneshwar by this uh, darasri radha trust recently because i wanted the my indian readers to access the books easily uh, than from here because uh, sending books from here would be more expensive and with that kind of facility now one writer has written an anthology uh, collection of reviews of my novels uh, and uh, a student uh, in uh, west bengal and gorobanda in banga university is doing her phd on my novels so that is the latest right so uh, they are it's uh, very difficult uh, you know to survive uh, in our country in nepal uh, uh, by uh, dedicating full life in uh, literature by producing uh, books um i think the same is true in sri lanka as well all the things are different there no it, it is worse in sri lanka i don't know uh, there are uh, very few writers who uh, depend on their writing but they uh, write a lot and they write popular novels so they get some income and some of them they have started their own publishing so they make some uh, they could make a little little uh, living not luxurious but make a living but all the others are struggling and even i uh, i was uh, i was working in the private sector uh, till i retired and so i still get a kind of a pension also so i can manage to write i am free to write so not everybody would be able to do that and uh, most of the writers are employed in other areas so they have their income for them to survive and they write because as one of our archaeologists said about the sigriya poetry because uh, they have the itch to scribble or to script to uh, write so that is what is happening so um, you know with the rise of uh, technology and the time that we are living in right now um our life is kind of you know uh, occupied by the machine uh, largely in such a context um do you see the um you know the influence of literature uh, in the larger society is still going to be same or how do you see the future of literature unfolding uh, well the future of what i see is that uh, now the literature is readily available freely available anywhere on earth so that is one big advantage so anyone who wants to read has the opportunity to read anything from anywhere and that also gives the opportunity for others 
to be encouraged to write because now one of the major restrictions in our part of the world especially was to get their work published but now they don't have to wait for a publisher they can publish their own work and uh, now in the future probably we may not be able to read and write because we can depend totally on technology and uh, that's why there are predictions that people will become illiterate in a few decades time because they don't have to read or write they can listen and they can re- they can hear and they can read they can speak right so those advantages are there in a way and uh, and also it creates uh, new forms of literature now uh, there i i think uh, an indian writer did it first where uh, the number of people contribute to do one story we we write something online so we are online with a group so somebody else will add something into the story so that kind of uh, living stories are evolving now so that is a fantastic thing and and if we can uh, work on that then probably people from different countries could join and create stories so those are advantages that i see with the technology so we have seen uh, you know there's very less exchange that's taking place between the uh, writers or authors at the south asian level there are some programs Uh, it used to be uh, quite a good exchange in the past but do you feel that that has decreased or uh, is there a space to uh, have that kind of platform again no it it has decreased very badly because the one very strong uh, forum we had was this uh, first world that is foundation of sark writers and literature which was uh, founded by uh, ajit kaur in delhi she took the initiative uh, first by uh, trying to get the pakistani writers and indian writers together that was the first step after that she extended it to the all the other sark countries and they were supported by the uh, indian government the iccr and uh, also the sark secretariat also assisted her. but then after sark started their sark cultural center the funding for foswal dried up so she is still trying to do something but now with uh, age and all that it's not uh, functioning as it used to be so those days all the sark countries we used to meet twice uh, in india uh, for literary festivals and uh, and once uh, we had it in uh, bangladesh also so then we then uh, i mean most of the friends i made from the other sark countries my first contacts were through this foswal where we met and uh, then the after sark took over for two or three years it they tried to do something but because of political issues and all now it is virtually dead because uh, pakistan and india issues are also there and uh, the other problem is sark is controlled by the ministries of foreign affairs right so they have no interest in culture or literature so that's why it's not working because for one or for three or four years they tried to publish uh, annual anthologies one on short stories and one on poetry uh, from all sark countries and translated into english and they had a uh, big plan of translating into each language of the, the main language of each country so it didn't work out now of course uh, with technology now at least we have this kind of advantage and uh, we have this uh, online conferences so that is uh, one thing now for example sri lanka has not had any Uh, sark or international conference for the last 3 uh, or 4 years i think right so now our writers don't get an opportunity to meet writers from other countries and uh, so our literature doesn't go across so it is very sad but we need i think what you are doing is great you are putting writers together from around the world so whatever support i give you you can count on me thank you so much that's a that's a huge encouragement i mean the whole purpose of this platform is also to 
you know, bring in South Asian and then, and, you know, uh, thought leaders from across the globe. So I'm trying my best. Uh, and uh, honestly, it was uh, lovely to hear all the experiences of yours, Daya. And um, I'd like to thank you once again for your time. And uh, we'll stay in touch. Thank you for the opportunity. And also, uh, let me spread the word about your program to my friends. Thank you.